Electrics part four, connecting the B&V. Should be easy. All right, so before we start, the classic warning of we're not professional electricians. We've done our research, so everything that we do in this video is going to work for our system. But please double check for yours. And if you're not sure about anything, please go consult a professional electrician and have somebody check out your DIY system. All right, the BMV 712 battery monitor. Excuse the weird accent, I don't know where that came from. Now it's always a good idea to have some sort of battery monitor just so you can track what you're using, but since we have lithiums, we needed a specific monitor that works with lithium ion phosphate batteries. And the Victron BMV712 is pretty much the one that's best recommended for this, so that's why we got it. Not sponsored by the way. Inside, we've got the monitor itself. Let's get it out. So that's the monitor. Then we've got power cable another cable, the housing for that, and then our data cable. The other thing that comes with this kit is the BMV shunt, which we've already installed in our electrics, if you've seen part one, two, or three, and basically we've connected all the negatives to that shunt, and then we essentially connect this monitor to that shunt so it can read all the power that's going around our system. The first thing that we do before touching any part of the monitor is we need to recharge our batteries because this needs to be uh, plugged in when the batteries are confirmed to be a hundred percent charged. And that is very important because otherwise this will not configure itself correctly and it will just read things all over the place. This is essentially a fancy calculator and if you don't set up the parameters correctly to begin with it will not know on what planet it is. So we have to make sure the batteries are fully charged and we're gonna use our AC charger over there. So, uh, battery's charged and now we come to connecting it. So the BMV itself comes with some uh, quick installation uh, wiring diagrams and as far as I can see, we don't need to do anything fancy. We just need to connect it to our leisure battery and to the monitor itself. We don't have a temperature sensor or anything else. So to start with, I think just only two connections. So this here is our shunt. This came with the uh, monitor itself. These here are all the negative leads from all the boxes, the fuse boxes, the chargers, etc. And then the top one goes directly to the negative of the battery there. That way, all the charge flowing, all the voltage, etc., the current has to pass through this shunt, which in this shunt is going to be connected to the BMV. And also something to point out, the negative cable going from the shunt back to the battery has to be thick enough to be able to handle all the charge at the same time. So if the MPPT was running, the DC to DC was running, and all of our fuse box for the rest of the van was running at the same time, it has to be able to handle all that ampage passing through it, which is why it's a 50 mil thick cable. Okay, so here on the shunt, we have, so you have this terminal, which connects the, the cable directly to the monitor. And then you have these two separate portals. One is B1 and one is B2. I can't actually see which one's which at the moment. B1 is the one uh, closest to the top. Right, okay, so B1 and B2. And in our case, we just need to connect the power supply in here and connect that to the positive of the battery. Right, oh, it's a bit tricky to reach when one has already mounted it in such a way. Right, so that's now in. Yep. And then what's supposed to happen is, uh, Put it down here. There we go. And we, then we reach over there. And then we need more hands. So we've connected this end of the cable to the BMV shunt. And now there's just a port in the back that we're able to connect it to. Alright, what's that showing? I can't read upside down. Battery. Battery capacity. So we can either set it up using this actual monitor or we can use the Victron app because this is a Bluetooth module so we can just do it on the phone. And I prefer the phone. Okay, right, Victron app. Yeah, pull down the screen to initiate a scan. There we go. 
Oh, so it sees our MPPT as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so click on the top one. Connecting. Tap pair. to pair with, yep, yeah, pair and connect. And then it said six zeros. Don't leave the app while update is in progress and stay, stay close to the device. <laughs> So we see the voltage, so that's the... Voltage of the battery. That's the operating voltage of the battery at the moment. We're drawing no power, current zero, mm -hmm. Yeah. no watts. We haven't consumed any amp hours. Time remaining <laughs> infinite, we like that. Okay, so settings, we need settings. Settings in the top right, yeah. Not now. Not now, hold on. <sighs> settings disabled, Up where, update to the latest firmware version. Required. Again? Yep. So in the meantime, when setting up uh, the uh, BMV settings, you have to really look at your own batteries. So the start where we have lithium ion phosphate batteries, so that in itself can change quite a few settings, but also you have to look at the specs of the batteries that you picked. Yep. So we have uh, uh, Reliant batteries, so RB100. And basically each battery manufacturer has their own recommended specifications when attaching some sort of monitor to the batteries. Yeah. So things like uh, uh, the efficiency, the um, what is it, the di the discharge cutoff, the charge voltage, um, and other things. So oh, there you go, it's done. So we'll um, <clears throat> actually go through them a little bit more yeah. now, unless it goes for for another update. Right. So click on there. Connects. Right. Settings. Settings. Right. Battery. Battery. Not now. <sighs> Battery. Right. Capacity, so, 200 amp hours. So battery capacity is correct. Charged voltage. Okay, right. so I believe that is 14.6 for us. Yes. Can I type in that? Oh, yeah. 14.6. Okay. Okay. Uh, discharge floor. Um, um, if in doubt, instruction manual. And if in doubt, uh, because the instruction manual has confused you by, by their explanations, uh, go to the internet. Right. Discharge floor is not... Uh, leave that for a sec. Let's do All the right. other ones. We'll have a look at discharge floor. Uh, tail current. We have decided to put ours on 1%. 1%. So we're planning to double check that and also to experiment with it because um, it's, <laughs> it's different for... for Every yeah. setup, especially the tail current, depending on the charges you use, can change things a lot. Like mm. uh, solar can trickle charge like a few amps and things yeah. like that. And this percentage can can affect yeah. whether your battery's cut off um, at like <laughs> one amp charge or something like that. So what tail current is, is basically us setting it to 1% means that every time the charging going into the batteries drops below 1% of its capacity, so in our case... 1% would be 2 amps, then it would cut off the charging. Yeah, that's about as much as I understand. Yeah, so we'll leave it for 1% for now. Um, charge... charge detection time, so that's how long it has to wait to see whether it's fully charged. So yeah. if it's taking under the tail current for 3 minutes, it will then cut it off. Yeah. So we'll leave it at 3 minutes because that's its recommended setting. Okay, then the thing I cannot read, uh, per, per cats. Per Kurt. Per, uh, well, exponent. Yeah. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what this is, but I know we need to put it on 1.05 for uh, lithium batteries. I, I, th I think it's some sort of um, um, offset. So you know how uh, lead acid batteries, when you pull too much charge at the same time, uh, the, the amount of amp hours you can get out of them actually decreases. And that effect is much, much less with um, uh, lithiums, yeah. which I think that is why that number is slower. Yes. Um, okay. Okay. Charge efficiency. efficiency. We want that up to 99%. 99. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the, the uh, 
per hit exponent and the charge efficiency are the two uh, f factors that the guide specifically says for lithium batteries that that's yeah. what's recommended. So we didn't just cook these numbers <laughs> up. Um, They're in here. Yeah. So we're following specification as, as much as we can because this is the first time we're setting this up. And then if we find that it's not monitoring quite exactly for us, then we'll have to, um, you mm. know, play by ear. <laughs> okay. Current uh, threshold, point one. Fine. That's fine. And uh, time to go averaging period three minutes. Yeah, I think we should just leave that. Just leave it how it is. Okay, what is discharge floor? Uh, we need a interneting device that is not being used for setup. This person has ex the exact problem. Right. Um, you know, they, found that they have the setting <laughs> and they can't find any, find in the BNV manual. Yeah. Uh, okay, Victron, can you please not put, put a random update that nobody knows what it is? Okay, okay. probably not nobody, but... The the newbies. So discharge floor is supposed to mean the 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 baseline. The baseline yeah. of the di discharge. So in theory, our lead uh, lithiums can go all the way to to zero percent charge. No, not eighty. Oh. Um, it's the reverse way round. So you want to put twenty. Twenty. Oh right. So basically, if if that is what we think it is, when we see our time, technically we know that we have about twenty percent over that. Yes. Like it's it's like an emergency buffer. Safety net. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're not calculating on two hundred amp hours. We're calculating on, we're well, setting it to twenty percent would mean one hundred and sixty amp hours. I've I've never heard uh, that um, that characteristic be, being defined as discharge floor. I mean that that might be just me. Not, not reading enough <laughs> blogs or watching enough videos, though I feel like that's what I've done for two years. Uh, but, okay, yep. whatever. There we go. Um, I went through and everything has a green tick now. Excellent. So, so, top left going back. Double check if you click battery, though, they're all saved. Saved, right, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, that okay, should be going it. back and there. Right. So, basically, what, we're done with the setup. That's done with the well, We're assuming that that is correct? Yeah. All right, let me go and turn on the fan then. Is it pulling stuff? It went to 0.5. Well, actually, it went to 0 0.8, and now it's 0 0.5. So obviously, it had a peak when you turned on the fan. Yeah. So okay. it's pulling 0.5 amps. Uh, yep. So is that, is that at 10? 30%. 30%, okay. Well, I'll drop it down to 10. There you go, it's at 10%. That's okay, pulling. it's pulling 0.29. Okay, I'll put it to 100%. Uh, well, one at a time. Uh, so basically go 20, 30, 40, but right. wait for me to stabilize. For, for right. it to stabilize. Ready? Hundred. Three point eighteen. Three point one eight. Yep. Okay. So that's monitoring the voltage. Hours remaining. State of charge. How many amp hours we've used? How many watts we're drawing? How many amps we're using at the moment? Voltage. Auxiliary. Which voltage? Oh, the voltage of the auxiliary battery if you've got a second battery connected, which we don't. So Where is he getting that reading from anyway? I don't know. See on the side there it says AUX. Yeah. But if I go up here it says main. Right. So this is our battery and this is getting power from nowhere. It doesn't, it can't get it from anywhere. Okay. Right. So there we go. We've got it set up correctly. It's right, we've charging. tested this charging, we have made it to 99.7 <laughs> and it's getting really cold. It, it's quite deceptive um, <laughs> when one has good insulation and heating, how cold it is outside. Fan is off. <laughs> okay, yep, we're down to 0 0.1 amps. Right, so now we have the AC charger right here. It is plugged into our power cable connected to the house and we... Click that on. on. Okay. And let's have a look. Right, and we also have a monitor here as well that we, <laughs> that we use at the start. Yeah. Um, so right. if that now tries and charges the batteries, there we go. 29, 30, 30.5 30 amps. That's good. So it can so... monitor charge coming out and monitor charge coming in. 
Yeah, so the uh, BMV is definitely more accurate than this one, which <laughs> currently just says 30 amp, but it has less decimal uh, uh, spaces. Yeah. 99.9%. And that one's already uh, also dropping in voltage. Yeah, there we go. See, it's dropping 21 yeah. amps. See, that one says it's charging at 14.1, and that one's reading differently. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens when it hits 100. 100%. Oh, 100%. There you go. And that's cut off. Yeah. Okay. So does that say... Oh, so that will just trickle charge in the smallest of amps. Okay. Until it decides it's finished. But yeah, there we go. That works. Excellent. Right. Well... I would say for now, that's a success. And I think that's the main part of the electric setup done, more or less. I mean, obviously when the solar panels get put on a roof, we have to uh, then properly connect the, the MPPT and we have to set up the BMV again. That's very important. And especially for solar charging, apparently there's um, a bit more things to consider and you have to be very careful with what numbers you pick. So obviously we'll let you know when that happens, but I can guarantee that that will not happen until spring because it is really cold and I'm not going on the roof right now to put the solar panels on. We're going to be doing the heating instead because I know a lot of you are excited about us doing doing our hydronic heating and uh, believe me we are too uh, so yeah that, that's what we're gonna be moving on to sort of next and a, a bit of kind of um, shelving interior decor getting the cladding up at the same time as uh, we're figuring out the heating as always share your uh, stories and wisdom and whatever you can think of uh, in the in the comments down below and uh, we'll see you next time